to make it 18 points by his boot. Smack it, Pollard. It's good. Comparing this. How's it going guys and welcome back to yet another episode of Couch Coach Sports. It's your boy Bjorn here and as always to my left it's Dean. Dean how's it going boy? Oh, all good brother, all good in yourself. That's going good with me, good with me, no complaints. You want to get straight into the news? Let's get straight into it brother, straight into it. We've got, some, got some, some big exciting news this week. I guess it can be exciting for you if you're a Andre Pollard fan back in the box squad. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure, bro. That, that we were a bit uh, confused about that decision that the book, uh, coaches would make, but I think it was pretty obvious that they were going to choose Andre. But it's, it's, it's in a way, it's very good to see him going there. You know, he's an experienced player. He's, he's world-class, bro. It's just the thing that is going to be a worry about, is he undercooked or is he going to be on form? But, you know, in Form 100 is, is awesome to have at the World Cup. I know we've spoken about this before, uh, the hooker situation, because obviously Pollard came in as a substitute for Marks, who we've yeah. now lost, a huge loss. Obviously, he seems to be out for at least a year almost. So that's a big, big loss for SA Rugby. But uh, do you think we have adequate uh, cover at hooker position? I know Marko for Staden seems to be, they've been testing him out there. I saw him setting at a few scrums. But do you think just yeah. with Bongi left, we've got um, enough uh, replacements or enough quality on the bench to replace Malcolm? Yeah, I reckon, I reckon Bongi is, is also world-class in his own right. And I think Dion, you know, Dion puts, uh, has a, plays a, a, a very quick game and he brings something, a different element to the Bok team when he does play hooker. Of course, we've seen him lately only on the flank, but you have to remember he was a hooker. He was always renowned as a, 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 a very career. good. Exactly, his throwing seems to be good. Marco's throwing wasn't too bad, and you know what? If it does become a problem, or let's say, example, there is an injury, then they can always bring in Dweber later on, who has been in the systems and probably knows most of the calls and all that. So for now, I really don't think it's a problem until we actually see like that we weak in that position. But I doubt it. Really, it's. I'd rather have Andre there. Taking a bit of my pressure off money there, you know. We've spoken about this as well, the goal kicking situation with the spring box. Yeah. What do you think or how much influence do you think the, the Bokers performance has been in front of the goals for Nino and them to decide to bring Pollard back? Do you think that was a decision they took into consideration? I think there was an element to that. Uh, probably let's say sixty percent of the decision. But also I think to have that old head there especially when it gets to knockout stages it's, it's just a ben it's just beneficial to the whole side you know it's we talk about the leaders in our team that's a leader you want especially losing a leader like malcolm you know another former world cup winner like you say yeah exactly bro exactly he's been there done it won the t-shirt bro and on, and let's take a look at the rest of the squad obviously you saw pretty much from the the first game which is we taking we we this well we are in that to be our first team uh, yeah. Not many changes, just Malcolm where we lost with Bongi coming in. What do you think yeah. of the squad? Do you think they'll be capable to, to match the Irish? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Like on paper, these guys, we saw what they did against the Scottish. I maybe would have liked to see the uh, Andre Estes in a 12. I think he just brings another element to what our game is than what Damien has. Or what, just the form. It's just, I think, in better form than Damien at the moment. But other than that, but do you think the experience though is something that they were that they took into consideration? The experience of Damien has also left another former World Cup winner. He's been around for almost yeah. a decade now. Yeah, I think I think that's that's probably what put him there. And also the the, the combination with Jesse, they've obviously played together a lot more than what Andre and Jesse have, or Andre and Kanan had. But yeah, I think I see why they're there. It's an obvious choice as to why they're there. It's just my personally, I would have liked to see Andre there, just bringing. Especially on Bundy Aki, maybe also Damien, you know, he knows how the Irish play. They haven't played there for so many years. Mm. So maybe it's just that mm. you, that experience and the knowledge puts him ahead a bit rather than form. No, no, I definitely, I can see what you're saying there. Let's take a look at the bench though. Springboks going for, what is that, 7-1 on the bench, so 7-4 seven seven four is again, a one yeah. backline player. Yeah, I see them what's again. your what's your opinion on that? What's your opinion? Uh, I know the book have uh, been they've been doing it for quite a while now, so it's not something new. Yeah. Do you think the Irish have prepared for it? Because I'm I'm sure they probably did. 
how do you prepare for it? <laughs> no, the, the Irish will be ready regardless of who's on the bench. Mm. You know, they make such a, a hoo-ha about the 7-1. But that one player doesn't make much of a difference, bro, really. If you're talking about these, um, these tight games I get, you don't really expect to bring on a winger and expect him to go score a magic try in a, a World Cup game mm. like this. You know, so... Seven mm. one is, is is such a smart play. Let the forwards play. The forwards are going to dominate the game again in terms of percentages on the ball. So let's be ready for it. If the Irish were clever, maybe they could do the same. But uh, it, I don't know why it's seen as such a taboo thing around the world. If it works, it works, bro. <laughs> I guess I guess if you look at the sides uh, around the world, it's pretty much just us and the All Blacks who have this yeah. luxury of having such versatile backline players. Because yes, if you look, yeah. Damien. Damien can play in a, in a handful of positions. Kurtley can also go back to fullback. Jesse can play on the wing and fullback. Damien yeah. can play on the wing. Chase on wing and fullback. Marnie can also play in a handful. We saw Faf play at Flaff a little bit. So I think yeah. the versatility is a big factor in why we're actually going with the 7 1 um, subs. Yeah, for sure. For sure. It definitely is. And I mean, Corbus can probably come on at any position in the back line anyway. So it's. Yeah. it's, it's another speed demon. Yeah, exactly. So. It, they're in a, they, you're right, they're in such a lucky position where they don't actually need to be picking position specific guys and we've got guys who can cover cover all positions on a world class level. Yeah, so well if seven one, why not, bro? Why not? Let the guys go out one hundred percent from the first few minutes and let them know that they can get a rest at any time. <laughs> mm. Talking about experience and what he brings to the Bok team, it's so good to see Iban back, especially after that early scare in the, the first game. Yeah, that for sure. Scare. For sure, bro. That's such a man mountain. I think it's, it's so important to have him there, bro. It's a blessing that he didn't get injured too hard. I was impressed with the way Sean Klein and RG's name went fold in. But Eben is Eben, you know. It's difficult. Really. It's difficult to replace the best lock in the world, and it's that's what he is. So He's definitely at the moment the best lock in the world. Exactly, exactly, bro. And you spoke about experience. It's just the the the, mm. the confidence he brings the rest of the guys around him is massive, bro. Mm. Physicality as well, hitting the rocks. He's gonna be. He's gonna make exactly. a huge influence to to the Bucket team. So having him, especially yeah, for back sure. for the Irish, is, is is great. Exactly. Yeah, it's shocks, shocks. Really like a bar. Um, Max, this is his strongest team, bro, and I think uh, he'll, he'll be very happy to be putting this team on the field. I'm happy seeing it, and I'm excited to see what they do in the game. Mm. Yeah. Back to the goal kicking, though. We yeah. see, we've seen a handful. We've seen Faf, we've seen Marnie, and Damien kick for post. Who do you think's going to be kicking this weekend? I think it was Marnie both, surely. Yeah, eh? You yeah, got to give Marnie the trust. You, exactly. I think they're going to give Marnie the trust, but I wouldn't be surprised if they pull him out a bit earlier. And put Damien mm. Vil Vilimso back on. Damien kicked pretty well mm. against the Romanians. Okay, I understand the pressure's not the same. He did miss a few that were a bit wider and things like that. But I think, it, like I said with the last game where Marnie kicked, the last two kicks were just so wide, bro, so wide. And if he's kicking with that kind of confidence, the sooner they get him off of kicking, if, he, if he's kicking badly, the better. I would, I would give him the chance again to just... Uh, you know he has those days where it's just his eyes in and he's kicking everything over, and that would be great for him in terms of like getting the the media off his back a little bit, and building his own confidence. You know, so hopefully he he does that. You know, I backed him for the first game to get confidence. 100%. Confidence is such a key element for a flyer to have, especially because he's your exactly. general. He's the general of play, so you need someone that can express himself and we saw Marnie definitely in the first game against this against Scotland he expressed himself nicely a man of the match performance stunning yeah. no look cross kick so he's definitely got it in the bag yeah I think the comp it's a weird thing it's a weird situation like he's playing with mad confidence bro like confidence above yes. his experience level and like what we expect from uh, what we see from other flowers it's probably just that moment when he's standing alone in front of the ball where it, it's the body maybe isn't moving as he likes or maybe it's just his routine isn't the same as what he's training it to be because he maybe like just it's a, maybe that small mental slip in those few seconds. I see he tends to look mm. at the, the, the shot clock quite often. It might be a thing of like, mm. you know, he maybe wants to run down the time a bit and then in that time like kind of loses his like motion. I don't know. I'm not a kicking coach, so I wouldn't be able to say it, but 
it's definitely that it's just in that that those few seconds between him and him uh, the play and him kicking the ball. Another big call though. I'm not sure if he's injured or not, but no Dwayne from Milan in the goal twenty three. What's your take on that? Oh, bro, it's it's a tough one, eh? It's a tough one to take him out. There's obviously a reason. Maybe it's injury. Maybe they just think that his play style isn't what they need right now on the bench. If you look at who's who's there, Marco Fostare and Kwaja Smith, those are guys that are, are, are pretty quick around the ball, you know, a bit more um, involved in, like, stealing the ball. So I can imagine them trying to, you know, Van der is quite a fast guy, trying to, to match that speed of the Irish around the breakdown and what their loose forwards are bringing, you know. It might be a case of trying to match that and obviously Dwayne being a bit older the speed isn't there as much so I can see why he's not there but I probably would have I probably would have liked mm. him to be there the only problem again with him if you look at our team he's a he's a one position guy you know and the rest are mm. not no no I, so. no I hear what you're saying especially if you look at Dio Ferri and John Klein they can also both probably uh, substitute at, at flank or eighth man as well so exactly the Springboks versatility is really important for them especially going ahead in the, the competition like you say injuries you pick up little nickels all the time so it's very good to see the Boca have so many quality players that can play in different positions yeah for sure and it feels kind of like they're experimenting in that way just so that like if a situation mm. does come around they're not like very new to the situation. They know exactly what their plan is. Yeah. Everyone's played where they need to have played, and they know what they're getting out of everyone in certain positions. Bro. So oh. it's, it's a very smart way to go about it. As we know, Rassia and uh, Jacques are very clever coaches. So it's just probably just a, mm. a way of them uh, thinking about the the, f the future of the tournament. And let's go lastly, what do you think about our inside agent? Our very own John Klein, former Irish international, now back with yeah. the Boca. You th do you think he's going to give us any tips? Obviously, he knows a few <laughs> of the lads still in the Irish team, so... Ah, for sure. A big for one sure. for him. For sure, and a lot of these guys, what, who uh, played in Ireland? Damien, Delendi, uh, mm. Dwayne, Dwayne played, RG, RG, yeah, RG probably the, the main guy. <laughs> guy there. No, for sure. Yeah, he's I, still there right now. I reckon that... Uh, the Boca did their homework, you know, at, at both teams. Both teams are probably super prepared for mm. the, be, be preparing for months for this game. I think this is going to be a battle, like a big battle on the day. Whoever gets the, you know, the referee decisions, the luck mm. goes their way. It really becomes one of those games where it's it, it, it sometimes boils down to luck. If we look at the teams and the it form, either way, yeah. If we look at the teams and the form. I would probably back the Boca, which I, okay, a little bit biased, yeah. but if from if I was a neutral, I'd probably say the same. But yeah. it, 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 we can go at about 45-55, bro. That's, that's how close this game Yeah, is. it could swing either way. It could yeah. swing either way. And if there's a big moment in the game, if there's a red card, we've seen quite a few cards in this tournament so far. So if there's yeah, a red yeah. card or anything like that, it can change the whole game up in, a, in like a moment, in an instant. E exactly. And the discipline all game is going to be so important. Mm. I just hope, like, uh, if their discipline is weak, that we punish them in terms of money kicking has to be pinpoint, bro. This is going to be such mm. a big test for him and mm. what what our plans are going forward. Because I think if, if if he doesn't kick well, it might be a case of uh, Andres coming straight back in. Because at the end yeah, of the day... straight for that all day, yeah. especially in the knockout stages, you know. Because they, they, he's the devil you know, you know. They know Andre, they know yeah. what he can do. They've He's been there, done that before. So, I... I, I I can see that happening. I agree with you. Yeah, so it's a big moment like for our Yeah, yeah, but it's up to yeah. him, bro. If he, if he, if he produces the yeah. goods, he needs to take a shot. Exactly, the opportunity is here for him now. I truly hope. Mm. I like, I like, I love the way he plays. I see him as the future of our our so team for going, probably going into the next World Cup as well. So let's hope he does mm. take his opportunity with both hands, and he has a brilliant game. And if we, if he does have a brilliant game, and we're bringing Andre onto the bench. Bro, we can't ask for more. That is such a brilliant combination to have. You have the, the old head and the young boy working together. It's it's perfect. They can definitely feed off each other, as they say. Exactly, exactly. And on to the score predictions. The big one. The one that everyone's been waiting for. Yeah. You know we've been saying it's a close one. So what you going with, Dean? I'm going to go with South Africa 25. Uh, Ireland 19. Yo. 
Okay, we're actually super close. So I've got yeah. South Africa at 26 and Ireland at 15. I think the yeah. book are going to get a nice like 11.1. I hope so. I hope they don't put, put us in the meat grinder and have us stressing on Saturday night. But let them just get it done and we can have a good week. The main concern obviously is Bundy Aki. So if we can keep him quiet, I think I think we, got, we stand a good chance. Yeah, brothers, there's many. Van der Fleer, Sexton, you know, X Sexton get, ro get rolling and his, his, his eyes in with his kicking. They just, they just play in the right areas and mock, mock us for penalties. You know, it's a dangerous situation to be in at World Cup. I just hope that our forwards are up to it and they dominate the physical battle and we'll pull it through. I I'm sure so. they will. If you, if you look at our forwards, just size-wise, we've got some boys, big boys bro. there. Massive boys. Jasper, Peter Stefsia, Franku, Eben, all of them. Malerba, all of them. Even Kitzov. Yeah. Kitzov does a job at the breakdown. He's mobile and he's and he's got all that power and size. So, I mean, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm back in the Boca, though. Yeah, brother. Boca. Boca always, brother. Number four, incoming. <laughs> yes, I agree. Well, that's that, guys. Thanks for joining us. We hope to see you guys in the next one. Please like, please subscribe, leave some comments in the comment section. We'd love to get back to you guys. Now, until next time, cheers.